Hey guys, Will here. In my last video, I did a quick overview of the Pariah Outdoor Products uh, Sanctuary Sil Tarp, the uh, hex cut uh, model that I got. And as I said, uh, I was also going to release a video showing off some modifications I have planned for it. So before, I, so that's what I'm going to do in this video. But before I get on with that. I just want to apologize ahead of time. I am out in my front yard, so please forgive all the background noises of people taking their garbage out, cars driving by, uh, dogs barking, and so on and so forth. So, that said, let's get going. So, uh, I mentioned that I was going to, uh, one of the big modifications to the tarp was I was going to uh, Instead of using the uh, original uh, guy lines that came with the tarp to tie it out and uh, suspend it on trees uh, for my hammock setup here, I am going to use a ridge line I got from Dutch Wear Gear. And uh, I can find it here. So this is a Dutch Wear Gear ridge line. I uh, went with the option to have soft shackles with it and for those who don't know what soft shackles are I will show you here in just a second okay. all right so this is a soft shackle right here get close to that and so basically what it is is it's a, a line of uh, zing it or lash it here and uh, what this is is it it's a prussic knot but it's also um, got some berries made in it that allows it to expand on this little loop at the edge here and there's a little knot tied in on this end and you got this little uh, loop slash berry going on here that allows that to open up and this is basically you know same function as a carabiner where you can slip that knot through there and then that self tightens on itself and that's how you can connect to your uh, tie out on your tarp and then uh, the prussic knot allows the tarp uh, point on the ridge line to be adjusted like so but then when under tension we'll see this uh, when I get everything all finished and set up here uh, we'll see this in action and uh, just how that works and uh, so I, I I like that for the durability I like that uh, you know over plastic hardware but I also like that uh, because it doesn't actually require hardware at all, so it's very lightweight. Um, and then uh, it's got a little uh, Dutchware hook here. And then on the other end, you've got this uh, Dutchware uh, wasp. And the line is 30 feet of uh, zingit. Uh, I believe it's zing it. I'm pretty sure that's what what's called. And uh, yeah, it's got a soft shackle. Yeah, it's got a soft shackle on either end for each end of your tarp. And I am going to install that on the tarp right now. All right. So first of all, uh, I need to take off the original guy lines on the tarp here. So I'll be back in just a minute. Alright, so uh, I've got all my original guy lines removed from the tarp here and I'm ready to install this new ridge line on. So I'm just going to find the first soft shackle on this end of the ridge line here and uh, slip the knot end of it. 
through the loop on my tent uh, tarp here. It's like so. And then I'm gonna take that knot in and slip it through uh, this loop here on the other end. And then that's gonna grab a hold when I pull it closes that loop up and locks around that knot there and that'll really hold uh, when it gets tensioned under uh, uh, between the trees that is okay and I'm basically gonna I'm gonna repeat the process uh, on the other end here. Just loop through, open up the, the loop. Stop shackle here, slip the knot through. And pull, and it locks up. Like so. Okay, all good there. Okay, so the ridge line is installed just like that. Pretty simple. Just hooking up the two ends on the soft shackles there. Now, my next uh, mod, if you can call it that, not really a mod, but more of an addition. Uh, and none of these are truly, might not fit the, the real definition of what a modification would be, but they are just little additions to make the tarp a little bit more functional and convenient for me. And so, uh, we'll have a look at the ridge line all set up but in a minute here. Uh, but before I do that, uh, I'm gonna move on with the next phase and that's to add some snake skins to it. So, uh, I've got these uh, no CM mesh uh, nets here, or netting, that I uh, built some snake skins out of. These were used on my uh, last tarp. I actually bought these pre-cut, by the way. Uh, I want to—I forget where I bought it from, but uh, they were pre-cut, and then I just sewed them up together uh, from there. So, so anyhow, uh, yeah, I removed them from the uh, other tarp I had been using, which was an eight by ten rectangular tarp. Uh, it. Uh, lost one of the tie-outs, tie got ripped out of it. Uh, they were made of grommets, actually, so uh, yeah, not the best tarp for hammocking, but you know, it worked up until the grommet ripped out, and uh, that was all because of a dog ran through, uh, got caught up in the, in the guy out while it was in the yard and ripped it out that way, so uh, it was not due to weather or other stress. Anyhow, it's, it's totally repairable, but also a good excuse to upgrade to uh, a better, more functional tarp that works, performs a little bit better uh, for hammock setups like this hex mat. So, um, let's see here. So what I've got here is a, a little carabiner, well, an uh, average size carabiner here. <clears throat> I'm just gonna clip it onto the end of the tarp here and what this is going to do is gonna give a little bit of weight for it to uh, drop through the uh, snake skin here. Take the uh, end of my ridge line here and tie that on as well with an overhead knot so I don't lose it in the snake skin. Maybe another one just to be safe. Alright, now we're ready to drop it through. I 
is just to like bunch it up here and you're pushing it in and kind of shaking it to let that weight continue to fall through. And ultimately you get to a point where you can just reach in, grab that carabiner, pull through like so. Untie your uh, ridge line end here. So that end's done. Remove the carabiner and carry on to the next side. with the other end of the ridge line, just tie it off to the carabiner. And this time I'll just uh, do an overhand loop with that end of it. Uh, slip it on the carabiner there. And into the other snake skin it goes. That's threaded through. Pull my uh, this my guy line out or uh, ridge line here. Okay. Remove the uh, carabiner completely now. I won't be needing that. Just uh, quickly uh, untie my other little knot that I had here. Okay. Now I believe we are ready to hang it up and have a look at it there. Right, so of course it's getting a little dark on me here so I try to finish up this video here. So here's a look at one end of the ridge line. This is the end you set up first. So again, it's got a little hook uh, fixed into the line here. And uh, so you wrap this line, or wrap this end around, like around your uh, post or your tree. You bring it back around to connect it onto the ridge line with the little hook on it, like so. And then the ridge line, he runs out to the other tree. Of course, we've got the uh, snake skins here still enveloping the tarp. And uh, come over to the other end of the tree. And uh, you take, you make sure your uh, wasp here is close, closer to the hammock, or I mean closer to the tarp on the ridge line there. And then you take the rest of the line, wrap it around. All right, so here's a quick demo of how this tarp wasp actually works. It's a really cool piece of hardware. Now again, it's titanium, as was the other hook on the other end, so it makes it ultra strong, but ultra light as well. And uh, for the most part, it you, know, you can adjust it down the line as needed. Um, as long as the line's pretty loose, it, it runs pretty freely. So, uh, Anyhow, to lock it in place though, so that there's no chance for it to slip, you want to just pull out the line a little bit here and uh, loop. Oh, get it here. Loop it in on itself like so, just right around that tail end there, and that locks it right in place, so uh, it can't slip either way. And then you take the other end of your uh, ridge line here. You bring it around the tree, like so, and then the wasp gives you this mechanical advantage as you uh, hook it right under the head here. Pull that, that tautly for that mechanical advantage, or like a pulley there. 
and then uh, basically bring it back around I like those brass the bubbles. tail and pinch it off and the tail like so. And then the tarp's not going anywhere. Of course, if you want extra reassurance, you just uh, tie in some not easy slip knots. Uh, but uh, yeah, you can get creative at that point if you want extra security. But you know that thing is so tight under the wing there uh, that it's pinched off so well that that shouldn't go anywhere. So. Alright, so here's look at the uh, snake skins up close. So I've just got uh, little cord locks on each on the inside edge of each one and uh, that just opens up the uh, the wide end here of course I got the uh, a channel sewn in to allow the uh, this reflective uh, glow wire cord to uh, run through it basically what you can do uh, well first of all the advantage of the snake skin or a sleeve a lot of people nowadays are going to a full length sleeve anyhow um, it allows you to set up your tarp and just have it ready to deploy in case of inclement weather but if the weather stays fair and you have clear skies you want to be able to see the stars while you're sleeping or just uh, have a full view about you uh, while you're in your hammock you can keep the tarp uh, suspended like so in the uh, snake skins and then uh, again only deploy it when you need it or want it you know maybe you want privacy at some point and so you're ready to deploy so you just loosen up either either end here and pull back on it, it just slides right off so, and then uh, same thing on this end. And slide, slide, slide. All right, so the tarp doesn't look so great now because I need to uh, adjust those prussic hooks for one, or those pr prussic knots on the uh, soft shackles. So I'm going to do that with this end, since the other end is pretty well set with that wasp over there. So, and I just have to slide it out that way, as tight as it will go. And then that flattens out the, the top of my tarp there. And now under tension, as I pull with my left hand here, that uh, prussic knot is not going anywhere like so and then what I like to do is I like my ridge line running underneath the tarp and uh, of course to uh, it's pretty windy out here so to get that to hold I'm gonna have to drop the camera again and uh, stake it out and part of that process is gonna be putting new guy lines on all right so here's a look at it all set up the uh, new guy lines on it that I put on and so I believe uh, this was just the night eyes brand uh, but it's three millimeter uh, glow wire they call it and uh, I just like it because you know um, it's just a little more durable a little bit easier to work with and tying knots and stuff a little bit easier to undo knots when you need to uh, than the thinner uh, Dyneema line that uh, came with the the tarp and uh, so what I had is I had these all pre set already but uh, as far as the knots that already exist in the most of these guy lines so I had a bow line on one end to form a loop which I was then able to just uh, do a lark's head through the, the tie out loop on the tarp coming down the line you'll see this black line which is just some shock cord uh, it's just a strip of oh I don't know uh, 12 to 18 inches something like that and 
I uh, just overhand knotted each end of the shock cord and then did a uh, fixed it onto the the guy line or the glow wire here using um, clove hitch clove hitch right there and then a, a clove hitch securing the other end so that, that shock cord stays in and the idea behind the shock cord is that uh, being a sill nylon tarp, even though it's also got uh, a polyurethane coating on it, um, I'm not sure if it'll still take on a little bit of moisture and, and still absorb some moisture. And as a uh, sill nylon does, when it gets uh, real saturated and humid, it, it can collect moisture or, or absorb moisture and or even just when it gets colder it can stretch, has a tendency to stretch a little bit and in doing so it uh, can create a little sag in your tarp which you don't want to have when it's uh, pretty windy out um, and stormy and so you want to keep that tarp as, as taut as you can and so to prevent sag and having to get out in the middle of the night to uh, re-tighten your lines uh, the shock cord will hopefully uh, theoretically uh, um, increase the tension as needed uh, throughout the night and then um, as we go down to the other end here to the stake I have got on this particular guy line I've just got a taut line hitch tied there and so uh, the advantage of the taut line hitch of course is that you can uh, run it up and down the line and it will uh, hold on to the line running through it so that uh, you can adjust it as needed and uh, you know if you know the elastic wasn't enough to keep the uh, tarp taut throughout the night it's nice having the, the taut line hitch there because you can easily uh, slip it uh, back up real quick and then jump back in your hammock. Um, the also nice thing about taut line hitch is you can just leave it tied in on the guy line like there, just adjust it down, get some slack, remove it from the stake, pull your stake, and uh, it's ready to go for the next time. And then uh, pretty much got the same thing uh, on all four corners of the tarp. The only difference is on some of these guy lines, I, you know, and I always waffle back and forth between that taut line hitch to anchor it to the stake and uh, a trucker's hitch. So basically it's a, a, a little slip loop that I pull right form right here and then I pull the line around the stake back through the loop and then pull back for mechanical advantage and then just tie it off with another little slip knot hitch here and uh, yeah it's just a nice little trucker hitch to um, push the stake. Nice thing is I can s yank that out in the morning it comes right undone and uh, you know it's it's another real simple and easy way to tie out your guy line. Um, so between that and the taut line hitch, I think they both work great and I can never make up my mind which one I want to use. So I use them both at times. That's about it for uh, the hammock here. I'm gonna pack it back in to the uh, snake skins here and then uh, take everything down, get loaded up for tomorrow's big trip. Still haven't decided whether I'm going to take this setup or uh, my tarp tent, but we may just be flipping a coin on them at the trailhead. But I will have both with me in my car at least. So. Alright, so taking it down now. Uh. Oh, and by the way, I'm going to be using ground, I like to use uh, MSR Groundhog, Groundhog Minis. Uh, not only are they smaller and lighter weight than the uh, stakes that came with the tarp, uh, they just feel stronger too, being a little smaller and more compact, and they still grip the ground really, really well.
except in the sandiest of conditions, or the sandiest of soil, that is. Okay, so now, what's awesome about these snakeskins is not only the quick deployment of the tarp, but the quick uh, cleanup here. Just uh, grab the end and uh, uh, pull through. Do the same thing on this end. set my phone down for a minute while I uh, finish this off since it's going to need two hands now for this last bit.